Hi everyone. So I am doing this recording because I wanted to show you how to use the OpenAI Playground. So if you have come to the prompt engineering guide, this guide is about learning how to prompt these large language models. And in our guide, we try our best to show you with different examples and different approaches, how to prompt these models for various use cases. Um, but at the beginning, what we want to do is we want to show you like basic uh, first steps on how to prompt these models. And for that, you really need to use a playground. So different language model providers provide different playgrounds for their models. One of the models that we use here in the prompt engineering guide is the OpenAI's playground. Um, but you can use any other playground. So what we want to show you is how you can use the playground to follow through the examples that we provide in our prompt engineering guide. So for that, you need to have your playground set up. So in order for you to have the OpenAI playground set up, what you need to do is you need to visit platform.openai.com and you need to create an account with OpenAI. And once you have created that account, you will see that you're signed in. Uh, when you go to the you know, platform.openai.com, what you see here is documentation by default. But what we want to do is we want to go to the actual playground. So we go to playground, we click on that. And here what you see is we see a nice interface where we can interact with different models, right? And if we go back to our guide, you will see that the standard or the default model that we are experimenting on is GPT 3.5 Turbo. Uh, you can experiment with newer models. So there are different variants of GPT 3.5 Turbo. And there is even GPT 4 as well, which is the the newer model. But so far, by default, we are using this, right? For all of our examples, unless we explicitly say that we are using a different model. And also notice that we have these values here. I'll talk about this in another video. But for now, for this video, what I want to do is just keep it in the scope of starting the playground and start to play around with it with some of the examples that we provide in our guide. So we're at the playground and just a quick intro of the playground. So what we see here is this playground has different settings, right? So there is a, uh, there is this panel here, which is a system panel, which is basically a system role. And we'll talk about what system role is in a minute. And we also have user role. And in addition to that, we have also assistant role. So we have three different types of roles. Uh, that allow us to interact with these language models in different ways. So also note that I am using here uh, the chat, the chat interface, right? So there are different uh, playgrounds here. There's the assistance, there's compare, there's completions as well, which I think will get uh, deprecated at some point. But for now, we're using the chat playground. Okay, and it looks something like this. So. Just to take an example here of a very simple example of how you would, uh, you know, how you would use the playground to test out the different prompts that we are providing in our guide. I'll show you very quickly here. So if you go to the left hand side here of the guide, we have different um, under introduction. We have basics of prompting. So if you go to basics of prompting, right, we see there's a basic prompt. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of copy it. Uh, use this copy button here. I'll copy that and then I'll bring it over to the system prompt, right? And then, uh, sorry, the system role, and then I'll just prompt them all this way. So once I have it like this, um, then I can just, I won't change anything. Everything is, again, temperature is default one, top P default one. We will talk about that later on in another video. But for now, what we're gonna do is just, we wanna test this out, right? And And, and I can see that it's already, producing or generating text, right? So this is a generative AI model. It's a text model that generates text based on the prompt. And it's basically continuing the text the sky is. Now, there are different ways how you can prompt these models because we have different roles, right? We have system role, user role, and assistant role. Um, we can leverage the models in different ways. So what I'll show you here is another way how you can go about um, interacting these chat models. So I'll remove my prompt from system role, and then I'll bring it over, add a user role, then I'll paste my prompt here, and then I'll submit it, right? And you can see that it gave me also a continuation of my prompt, the sky is. And this continuation is a lot shorter, and that's something to note here, 
right? When we use this prompt, you know, while we can do it, right, with the user role and leave the system role empty, right, we can do that, um, you will see that the outputs are very different. So you can see that here we use the user role, right? This guy is, and the assistant responded with clear and blue with fluffy white clouds scattered across it. It's very different from this, what the other example that I showed you that this is the system role is producing, right? It's, it's a different output. So that, that's something to note with these models that they're non-deterministic. They'll give you different outputs even though you're using the same prompt. But also because we're using the user role, it gave us something different. It's shorter than the previous one when we use system role, right? So that's something to note. There's nothing that says that you shouldn't leverage models this way or leverage the system role. The system role is really a useful feature if you are building out an assistant and you want to enforce some type of behavior, you want to enforce some type of logic in the way the model is responding to you. That's what you will use the system role for. But because this was a very basic prompt, you know, I just used the user role and it, it, it is totally valid to use it this way. So it's a bit flexible in the way we're using uh, the model. So I think I will leave it at, at that. And for all the examples, you can pretty much do the same. So if you go to our guide now, you know, you can take something like this, right? And you can either use the system role or you can also use the user role here. So you can do some like something like this. And then you can say, um, again, complete the sentence, the sky is blue on a clear day. Because we were a little bit more specific here, you can see that the assistance response was a lot shorter because now it's a sentence, right? So this is the very neat part of working with these models that the more specific you are, the better the results are gonna be. So that's a quick introduction into the playground.